Hello and welcome to Repverb. On today's video we have the Sony F670ES stereo amplifier. This amplifier has not had any kind of service or cleaning since it was new in 1991, so we're going to open it up and give everything a bit of maintenance. The stereo also has a bit of crackling when operating the volume control, which we will also attempt to rectify. It's barely noticeable through the speakers, but can be heard better when the headphones are connected. You'll get it dropping out slightly on the left speaker, but the crackle is hard to hear. So the first thing we're going to do is remove the main case cover. This is done by removing six top screws and four side screws. This amplifier is pretty heavy duty for a stereo amplifier, so there's a lot more screws holding the lid in compared to the most everyday amplifier. You can tell the lid hasn't been off in a very long time as it has took a bit of pulling off after the screws were removed. Here's a bit of a grim close-up of the current condition inside of the unit, which is a real shame it has been allowed to get like this. It won't do any favours for the operation of the components and also the heat inside of the unit. It's probably the most amount of dust I've seen in an amplifier I've worked on. So the first thing I'm going to do is give it a good vacuum out inside of the unit, using a soft brush to loosen the dust. Obviously taking care not to put pressure on any of the components and potentially dislodging them from the locations. I'll also use a small modelling type paintbrush to get into any of the small crevices. Here I'm unplugging a couple of the connections in this area to help clean that area better. Now I'm going to remove the plastic shroud around the large centre capacitors. This will then allow me to get underneath to clean this area better. This is the first Sony ES type amplifier I've owned or worked on. Even at this point you can tell the build quality is very good. It's just a shame that the previous owner has not kept up on the maintenance. Here I'm just wiping down the components with a small amount of cleaner on the rag. Now it's time to get the capacitor shroud fitted back on and then screwed back in place. The wire type that I'm currently cleaning I've never come across before. They almost look like a chain link through the outer clear sleeving. There is obviously more to them than this as they control the input and output selectors. I just thought they had a very interesting look to them. So now that we've done the bulk of the cleaning in the upper inside area, I'm now going to turn it over and sort out the underside. You can see here straight away that the lower access panel is dirty or stained, so we'll look at that first. This is held in place by six screws. First it needs good vacuum and wipe off, then it can be refinished with black. I'm also going to vacuum the underside of the circuit board area whilst I'm here. Now that I've refinished the panel with a fresh coat of black paint, it can now be refitted back in place.
onto the amplifier feet now. These are well and truly in need of a replacement. It looks like originally they may have had a clear rubbery type material finish. I don't have anything like this so I'm going to use a textured black type film which should give it a good grip when in use. To get the old adhesive off I'm using a solvent based panel degreaser which will help to remove as much of the old as possible. Here you can see I've cut the textured film to the correct size and applying it to the feet base. This film is self adhesive so it's easily applied. Now that the underside of the jobs are completed I can turn it back over to continue the work from above. I'm now going to remove the front fascia panel which is done by removing the three upper and three lower securing screws. I did remove the volume knob but you don't actually need to do this. And that's the front panel removed. The panel behind can now also be cleaned. The next thing to do is to spray some deoxit into the back of the control pots and mechanisms to help clean and lubricate them. I'm just putting some tissue underneath them before I do this to prevent fluid going everywhere. I'm using the green label deoxit for this. Once sprayed into the back of the controls, I'm working the knobs to get the deoxit all around inside. Now I'm going to remove the panel that sits behind the main fascia, this again, three top screws and three lower to remove it. This will then allow me to vacuum and clean this area. Now back inside to lubricate the other controls, spraying and working the knobs. The front inner panel can now be put back in place. Before we put the outer panel back on, it requires a small touch up of black finish in this area. This will tidy it up and take your eyes off of the scratched area. It is right on the edge so it's not as bad as if it was in the middle face of the panel. It looks a lot more noticeable on the video at the moment as it's still a bit shiny but when it dries fully it will be better and it will blend in more. Now to fit the main face here back on the unit and also we can refit the volume control knob. Again this didn't actually need to come off. Next job is to sort out the volume control crackling and occasional dipping out of the sound. Now I'm almost positive that this is just a case of cleaning the volume potentiometer. So I did this initially the hard way then realised this side frame could be removed and it made it a lot easier to get the volume control board out of the unit. It's two screws that hold the small side frame and two screws that hold the frame connected to the volume control board. Now that it is outside of the unit I can unsolder the volume control potentiometer. 
This is a 60k ohm Alps type component. I did take a look to see if I could replace this if required, but I couldn't find the exact same one. I found a 50k type, but not the 60k type. The only problem with these potentiometers is that they are pretty much sealed. You can take the two screws off to remove the lid, but can only get in this far. There are two separate contact surfaces for left and right channels. I didn't actually record this part fully, for some reason I couldn't find the footage. But what I actually did was to remove the screws and take the cover off, then spray that area with the oxit, working the controls. Then to get to the other contact area, I managed to open the case just enough to spray the deoxit in on the other side, hoping this would be enough to sort it out. Here it just shows me spraying from the outside of the component. I then soldered it back in place on the board and then to refit it all back in the amplifier. This actually rectified the crackling issue with the volume control and there's no dropouts of sound on the left channel, so luckily it has rectified without trying to find a replacement part because I could see that was probably going to be an issue. You can now see the process of putting this part back in, so it shows better obviously the bits that I took out to get that part out. It was only the main circuit board for the volume control. There's sort of like a little bridge connector which connects that to that circuit board to the circuit board on the rear which I think is like the input circuit board um, also there's some little connections which you push into the main board from this board they sort of push downwards and um, they just sort of fork into the bottom board and then there's a couple of screws that hold the bracket in place and you've got the two screws for the side frame part The volume control mechanism is held in place by some small Allen grub screws. So this is easily just put back in place, it's slid over and then secured with those small little screws. As I damaged the old sticker on the component, I reprinted it using my small Dymo labour maker and cut it out to fit, just in case it does need replacing in the future and needs identifying. So as you can now see the amplifier is in a much tidier condition inside and the components have had a quick bit of service maintenance. Now to refit the lid back onto the amplifier with the 10 fixing screws. I've also given the case a refurbish and retextured and finished in the satin black finish, which looks amazing. You can see it is a massive improvement for not a lot of work really. This amplifier deserved this to be done to it. There will also be an overview video coming soon on this amplifier to show it in operation and go over the details on it. Thanks again for watching the video, it's really appreciated. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.